In this video, we are gonna be talking about how to buy houses at a discount. In real estate, if you've been around for a little while, you've heard that you make your money when you buy, right? Which is kind of counterintuitive because you would think you make your money when you sell. But in real estate, the truth is you actually make your money when you buy. What that means is how you buy the house is going to set up whether or not you will ever make money in real estate. So I'm learning. So the whole idea is you have to get good at buying houses at a discount. Now, what that means is when you buy the house that you're already ahead in the game, right? What you are able to do with the house, whether you're fixing, flipping or wholesaling or you're doing owner financing like me, when you buy it, the, however you buy it at a discount at a lower price than you're able to turn around and sell it for it, that's how you create your spreads, that's how you make money. Now, if you're just getting in to real estate, you're a beginner, kind of like me, I've only been doing this for about about a year and a half now, 18 months it's it's been. Uh, by God's grace, been able to make some profit, which is nice, net profit. We're almost up to about $200,000 altogether and a small handful of deals. I just do this on the side. I still have a day job. I haven't been able to quit yet. I've got a family, four small kids at home. i uh, got another one on the way, actually. God has blessed Kelly and I with a fifth baby, if you can believe it. Um, but I'm actively getting into real estate, actively doing deals, and hopefully going to be able to transition into full full-time real estate and the spreads that we've been able to make on all of the deals that we've been doing, again, small handful of deals, has all been because we've been able to buy houses at a discount. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing four not quite so obvious reasons why somebody would sell you their house at a discount and ultimately how to get them on the phone so you can talk to them and talk about buying their house at a discount. I know it sounds uh, weird, it sounds counterintuitive, you're asking yourself who would do that, kind of like with creative financing, if you've gotten into creative financing at all, uh, buying with seller financing or buying with uh, subject to, you might be saying, why would anybody ever do that? Well, in this video, we're talking about four big, huge reasons why somebody would sell their house at a discount. And number four uh, is actually pretty interesting. It, it's not what you would think. Uh, I actually just signed up a house, meaning I, I got it under contract, uh, a subject to deal, just $1 down, and I'm basically stepping into 30, maybe as much as $40,000 worth of equity on this house um, just from day one without fixing anything, without flipping anything. Just day one, I'm stepping into thirty dollars to $40,000 worth of equity because of number four, four, because the sellers... Um, they're selling it at a discount effectively because of reason number four, and it's not what you would think. So we're going to go over these top four reasons why people would sell their house to you at a discount, and ultimately, once you know why, it'll make a lot more sense, and you'll be able to, to sniff this out whenever you're talking to sellers, particularly off-market, like I buy off-market. If we've not been introduced yet, my name is Jason Baca. Basically, a beginner real estate investor uh, started documenting the journey here on the YouTube video or on the YouTube channel, putting out uh, videos for you every single week. And if that's you and you're a beginner real estate investor just like me and you're trying to get your family financially free, feel free to click the subscribe button. Click, click, click. And join me here. I drop videos every single week trying to get you up and running and uh, get your family financially free, just teaching you what I'm learning as I'm learning it. So, without further ado, Reason number one, the, the this has uh, showed itself to be true many times on a lot of my seller calls. Uh, if you don't know, if this is your first video with me, uh, I do I get a lot of calls from um, sellers off market. I have yet to buy an on market deal. It's not that I'm against working with real estate agents. Some of my good friends are real estate agents. I've just not really needed to do anything on market yet, particularly because a lot of what I do is owner financing. And so um, instead of, as opposed to just wholesaling, that kinds of things. And so it's been going really, really well. By the way, if you need a jump start in all of this, um, you know what? That's the wrong one. Let me do that one. Uh, just click the link below and go to or go to reijumpstart.com. If you need your first or your next deal within the next 30 days and you need to get your phone ringing and your inbox blowing up with motivated seller leads, I give away like a free guide. It's a free cheat sheet. It's basically what I've been doing over the past 18 months to get myself going, how I got my first lead that led to my first deal. Uh, within the first 30 days of me actually trying. And uh, we did a little bit over $32,000 in net profit on that very first deal. And then, of course, I was hooked. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this real estate thing. 
<laughs> so if you need that, just click the link below. Uh, start start doing the things that are on the PDF, and uh, within the next 30 days, you should get your first or next deal, uh, at least the lead to that first or next deal, my free gift to you. Um, so number one, the number one reason why somebody would sell to you sell you their property at a discount is they need the money fast. They need the money fast. Now, let me back up a little bit. Traditionally, like 95% of all the houses that are bought and sold, at least in, in America, in the United States where I live, they're done what are called on market. That means the person hires a real estate agent. The real estate agent is going to tell them to declutter their house and clean it all up, maybe fix some stuff, um, take a bunch of pictures. They're going to put it on the MLS. The MLS uh, is you know, basically just like a database of all the people who are trying to sell their houses that other real estate agents look at. And they're going to do showings, right? They may have a couple open houses. They're going to have people who are interested, retail buyers who are interested in the house. They're going to come by the house and the family has to usually get out of the house and they have to clean everything and make it all nice and neat for the retail buyers, right? Um, potential retail buyers. And then those people show up with their agent and they take a look at the house, et cetera. And this kind of this like rigmarole, this process, right, of decluttering, fixing stuff, taking the photos, posting on the MLS, um, doing showings and all these things. And the idea is that in the end that that is going to yield you the highest profit or the highest net proceeds to the sale of your house, right? It's called on market. We're all very familiar with it. Usually, um, you know, when we talk about creative financing, basically it's like that end retail buyer is going to go borrow money from a bank and come pay off the other person's mortgage. And it's kind of like a cash transaction in the sense that it's the bank's cash. Whereas when we talk about creative financing, this is one of the hurdles you're going to have talking to sellers off market about creative financing or even real estate agents because they don't know any other way to buy a house. But that's a, that's a side note for another time. Lots of videos on the YouTube channel about that. So subscribe, click the like button. If this is helpful, go check out those videos. So the reason why somebody would sell to you their house at a discount, let's just say it's worth hundred thousand dollars, but they'll sell it to you for 80 is because they really need the money fast and they don't have time to go find a real estate agent, like vet which one is a good one. They don't have time to declutter their house. They don't have time to you know, launch it on the MLS and do showings and then they get it under contract. And then there's just use this long, like due diligence period. It's usually, you know, anywhere from 30 to 45 days, 30 to 60 days, depending on, uh, on how it goes. You know, every situation's different, but it's usually a month or two before someone like gets it, the contract, the property under contract, and then they close on the contract and that person actually sells the house, deed actually transfers names and money actually hits the bank account, right? It takes time. It takes a little while for them to clean up and get the house ready, take the pictures and schedule and all that kinds of stuff, and then do all the showings while it's on market, and then they get it under contract, and that person's going to hire an inspector, and they got to get an appraisal and all this stuff. It just takes a long time, and so one of the reasons why somebody might sell you their house at a discount, let's just say it's actually worth as is $100,000, but they'll sell it to you for eighty dollars or eighty five, dollars is because they just do not have time to go through that entire process, right? They they might even know it'll sell for 100. In fact, if they're like most sellers, they think it'll probably actually sell for way more than that. <laughs> most sellers think their house is worth way more than it really is, but they might even be willing to have like a realistic price or even come down from a realistic price because they just don't have time. So what are some situations that somebody might have where they just don't have time to go through that whole process? Well, number one, sadly, is like divorce. They might be getting a divorce. They need to get this house sold. They need to get it liquidated so that uh, before the divorce is finalized, they can split up the proceeds. It's just a big hassle after the afterwards, etc. Um, it just gets really complicated, and so sometimes they just don't have time to wait two, three months, or even as much as six months sometimes for a house to sell for top dollar. They're willing to sell you their house at a discount if you can come to the table and buy it right now. Like get under contract within a few weeks, you can close on this thing, give me my check and go. And in exchange for that, 
In exchange for the speed and convenience that you are offering as a real estate investor, they are willing to lower the price to make it a deal for you, which is means that you're more likely to want to do it, right? You're going to want to do the deal if you're going to, if there's a nice little spread there. So reason number one is that they just don't have time. Now, here's a little side note. Uh, I'm sometimes very active in some of these Facebook groups, like real estate investor Facebook groups. And somebody posted the question, um, how are you, for those who are investing off market, that's what I'm doing, uh, how are you getting in front of the sellers or talking to the sellers before they list with a real estate agent? That was the question. How are you talking to them and, and getting ahead of it before they list with a real estate agent? And my advice to this young lady uh, I call her young because I feel like I'm getting old. But <laughs> but uh, my advice was um, I don't ever try to talk to people, to sellers, before they list with a real estate agent. The, where you're going to find your best deals and where you're going to find the people that you can actually help the most is not to find people who are going to hire a real estate agent and try to talk to them ahead of time. It's rather to find people who can't list with a real estate agent and put it on the market. And these four reasons that we're going over in this video are four big reasons why somebody can't. It's not that they, um, it's not that they uh, are going to, and you're just, you know, beat a real estate agent to the punch as far as getting in contact with a seller. The best deals and the best people that you're going to be able to help are people who literally cannot list their house on the market. And number one reason is because they don't have the time. That it's just going to take way too much time. Whatever situation they're in, whether it's divorce, job loss, job change, um, like you know, death in the family, like something has happened that makes that has put this person in a situation where they need to sell very fast and they they literally cannot hire a real estate agent and put the house on the market and sell it for top dollar, dollar retail value because they don't have time. So those are the exact kind of people that you want to talk to, particularly off market. And honestly, those are the people you can help. Uh, as a mentor ta taught me one time, he said, Jason, uh, it has... People, when people sell their house, it's almost never has anything to do with the house, especially what they call like motivated sellers off market. It's almost never has anything to do with the house. It always has to do with a situation in their life aside from the house that they see the house as a solution to. So whether it's divorce, whether it's a uh, you know death in the family, they need to move very quickly. Um, they have some like bill, they're getting sued and they're going to have to pay a lawyer or something and they don't have the money. They see the house as a solution to this other problem that's happening. It's always about something else. And so when you can like cue in on that, when you're talking to sellers, particularly off market, figure out like, what is the real problem here? What's the real motivation? Why are they selling? selling this house and oftentimes selling it at a discount, it's almost always because there's something else going on in their life that they need to tap into the money of the house to solve that problem. It almost never has anything to do with the house. It it almost never, 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 never does. It's always something else. And so the, life has put them in a situation where they don't have time. They need money and they need it now and they don't have time. They literally can't hire a real estate agent and put their house on the market. That's reason number one. Again, if you grab the guide below if you want, um, you know, how to get your marketing jump started to start finding deals off market. Number two, now this one is uh, a little bit more obvious why somebody would sell you their house at a discount, and that is that their house is not exactly what you would call retail ready. <laughs> their house is not exactly what you would call retail ready. What does that mean? Meaning, in order for somebody to, to hire a real estate agent and put their house on the market and get top dollar, which, by the way, for the record, is the way that you are going to make the most money from the sale of your house. It almost always, always, always is going to be to hire a real estate agent, do whatever you need to do to the house to get top dollar. Oftentimes, that includes fixing things, but at the very least, decluttering, cleaning it out, you know, like cleaning out the gutters, mowing the lawn, whatever. You're going to have to do some work, all right? Hire the real estate agent, do some work, put it on the market, and find a retail buyer, meaning the person who's going to buy the house from you is going to borrow money from a bank, and they're going to pay off your old mortgage and whatever's left over after closing costs and the realtor fees, et cetera, is net proceeds to you, the seller. 
like almost 99.99% of the time, that is the way you will make the most amount of money, right? Because the retail buyer is borrowing money from a bank, right? It's not coming out of their own pocket. They're, they're borrowing money from a bank. It's a lot easier to borrow money, $200,000 for a house from a bank than it is to come out of your own pocket $200,000, right? And it's a lot easier to borrow that money and pay off the, and buy your new house and not think about the fact that it's actually probably going to cost you four or $500,000 to pay for that house over the next 30 years, right? That's how banks make their, make their money. They lend you 200 to buy the house, but within 30 years, when you rack up all the payments and add it all up, you actually paid $450,000 for this house, right? But the your average retail buyer is not concerned about that. All they're thinking is, oh, I can get a loan from a bank. So let me borrow as much money as I possibly can and go buy a house with it, right? That's why you're going to get the most amount of money on a retail market from a retail buyer. But what happens when your house is not exactly retail ready? It's not ready to be listed on the retail market. What does that mean exactly? That means that the retail buyer who is going to be borrowing money from a bank and paying top dollar for your house is going to come to the table with some expectations as far as what this house looks like. Like they do not want to buy a house that is in distress and falling apart. They're not going to want to borrow a bunch of money and buy a house that they have to do a bunch of work on. As a matter of fact, as you'll find out in the retail process, usually at some point in time, an appraiser is going to get hired that the bank is going to send out to the house and, and verify, is this house even worth what it is that we're looking to lend on it? Is this $200,000 house even really worth $200,000? Because at the end of the day, what does the bank care about? Getting their money back and making money on their money. That's all they care about. They don't want the house back, right? And if they have to take the house back via foreclosure, they want to know that we can at least get our money back that we lent out on this house, right? The problem is if your house is in disrepair, it's like, you know, a hoarder house and it's full of stuff and there's mice in the basement and, you know, there's all these problems. The bank is not going to lend money to this buyer couple who wants to buy your house. And if the bank is not going to lend money to the couple, then they can't buy it because they need the bank's money in order to buy the house. And the buyer is not even going to give the house a second look if it does not look like what they want it to look like, right? That it's not turnkey that it's not retail ready. So there's a lot of sellers out there, I know because I'm buying houses from them, whose houses are not exactly what you would call retail ready. <laughs> they need some work, okay? Like we've, uh, one mentor of mine, he calls them junker houses. We've bought some junker houses. Like, uh, we again, we don't actually do any of the rehabs. I don't do any of the fix and flips. We just finance it to the next person who wants it. And that's how we create our spreads. But, you know, ultimately, we buy houses that you cannot list on the MLS. Like, I mean, technically you could. You could hire a real estate agent and put the, the junker house on the MLS. The only problem is the only person who can buy it is somebody like me who has cash or really access to cash. I've never actually spent any money on any of the houses we've ever bought. I've always had other people spend the money, like a mentor, business partner, somebody else to fund the deal. But uh, basically... They can't list it on the retail market. So those are the people that you want to try to get to talking to on your phone and in your inbox. You want to talk to people who feel like they're stuck with this house that's in disrepair, needs a lot of work. They can't do the work themselves or they can't afford to do the work themselves. Uh, it might be a combination of these four things we're talking about. It might be in disrepair and they don't have enough time to do the work themselves, etc. So those are the best people that you can help because they genuinely are stuck in many cases and they can't actually uh, hire a real estate agent and get top dollar on the retail market. So somebody is willing to sell you their house at a discount. That's the whole point here. Let's just say the house as is, even in its state of disrepair, is worth $100,000. They might be willing to sell the house to you at a discount for the simple fact that you are willing to buy it and you have cash. Right? They might sell it to you at $70,000 or even $60,000, depending on your negotiations, because they realize that even though their house is worth $100,000, you may be asking, why would somebody sell you a house that's worth $100,000 even in, in its as-is disrepair state for $70,000? The answer is because who else is going to buy it? 
You can't, no bank is going to, even though it's worth $100,000, no bank is going to lend somebody else $100,000 to come buy this house because it's going to be really hard to sell if they have to take it back because it's in disrepair. Stuff's caving in, stuff doesn't work, the roof is leaking everywhere. Like, no bank is going to lend money on that. So technically, even though it's worth $100,000, the amount of people that who are can buy it is really, really tiny, what they call a buyer pool. Your buyer pool is really, really tiny. It's basically just investors like you and me. Those are the only people who can buy it. So they're willing to sell for $70,000 and just be done with it because the alternative is they need to do the work themselves. They need to invest tens of thousands of dollars into getting this house up and running. They need to put a bunch of work into it. Then they can go hire a real estate agent and go get top dollar on the retail market three, four, five months later, right? But they just they they don't have the wherewithal, they don't have the funds, they don't have the resources, or they just literally like don't have the mental bandwidth and capacity to take on this big project. Maybe they're busy, they got a job, they got kids, they got stuff going on. They have a parent who's older and sick and had to move in with them. And the last thing that I mean, I'm telling you actual stories from people that I talk to every single week. They, they want to do it. They have the best intentions. They otherwise would actually put in the money and go do the work themselves and get their house fixed up, but they just don't have the bandwidth. The house is just not retail ready. They don't have the time. They don't have the money. They don't have the energy, and so they're willing to sell the house at a discount for um, – in exchange for you being willing to buy it. This actually happened, uh, we bought a three house bundle just recently, is all three houses together. Um, it was the same owner, all of them in disrepair, almost none of them move in ready. Um, you know, they all need work to varying degrees. One you could say is is move in ready. Somebody could move in and live there, but you're gonna wanna do some work first. The person before had like cats and dogs and it's a whole house smells like pee and is really bad. Like it needs work before anybody moves in there. But the seller was a little bit older, she had been widowed, and she was just done. She she just did not have the mental capacity to try to think through rehabbing three houses all at once. Most people stress out thinking about rehabbing one. Three houses all at once. She works all the time. She, she just does not have the mental bandwidth or energy. And so we bought all three uh, houses, and the second we closed on the houses – we needed to clean them out first. Actually, the clean out crew is actually cleaning them out as I'm recording this video. They're cleaning them out before I can turn around and sell them. Again, we're not going to do any rehabs. We're not going to fix anything. All we're going to do is owner finance them or seller finance them to the next person who wants to do all that. But the, I'm not joking when I say we bought all three houses at a discount. We walked into immediately about $100,000 worth of equity without fixing anything. We do need, we did need to clean them out because um, a lot of them have a bunch of stuff and trash, but need to clean them out. But besides the clean out, basically there's a hundred thousand dollars worth of equity, meaning I could the very next second we get these house closed out uh, or cleaned out. And this is exactly what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around and market them on seller financing. And the spread created is going to be probably about a hundred thousand dollars, right? So in, first of all, she probably would not know how to you know, get the houses ready and owner finance and market and do all that. So you could say the reason why I uh, can make a hundred thousand dollars on these houses as is, whereas maybe she could not, uh, is just because I know how to do what I'm doing now. But technically, if she knew how to do what I know how to do, which you know very few people do, I didn't even know how to do what I now know how to do a year ago. Um, Technically, there's $100,000 worth of equity, like owner finance value equity in those houses. And so why was she willing to give up on $100,000 worth of equity, aside from the fact that she, you know, wouldn't know how to how to do it. But, you know, why was she willing to do that? Because it was a huge blessing to her just to get rid of them. Like she just wanted to get rid of them. One had sat vacant for several years. Again, these houses are kind of falling apart. Like, they, they're not like teardown projects, but I mean, they need a lot of work, a lot of help. And there are three of them. And she's like, I got three houses here. And I'm not joking when I tell you, she has thanked me multiple times throughout the process. And even after closing, thank you. You're really helping me out. You're really helping me out, really helping me out. Right. All the while, aside from one little clean out that we got to do, like we're probably going to make about one hundred thousand dollars on across three different houses. Right. Um, just in turning around and, and selling them again. And she's thanking me because her houses were not retail ready. That's the whole point here. Number two, 
They're not retail ready. That's a huge reason why somebody would be willing to sell you their house at a discount. Is not because you got to them before they hired a real estate agent. It's because you're talking to someone who literally can't hire a real estate agent. And so therefore they're stuck. And that's why you can actually bring a huge service to the industry. You can solve a huge problem by being able to buy somebody's house's cash at a discount because it's got to be a deal for you. And yet you're actually saving them from a really bad situation that they are thanking you repeatedly for. So uh, just so this video doesn't go super long, let's keep it moving. Number one is they don't have time to go on the retail market. Number two is they literally can't because the house is not retail ready. Um, this is another reason why they can't uh, go on the retail market and they're willing to sell the house to you at a discount. And that is because they're about to lose the house. Now, this is kind of an unfortunate situation and truth about the industry that we're all in, in, in being real estate investors, is that a lot of times the reason why somebody's willing to sell you their house at a discount is because life has put them in a situation where they can't keep the house. They just can't. They're in a dire financial situation. And whereas people who are outside of the real estate investing industry may see buying houses from people who can't keep their house as predatory or wrong in some way, you and I both know that it actually can be a life-saving, life-changing thing for somebody. Like the first house I ever bought subject to, I bought it subject to uh, $1 down. There was no equity in the house. I mean, on paper, there was like $2,000. Like, I mean, tiny little itty bitty spread, but there's basically no equity. The guy had moved into the house with his girlfriend. Uh, things went went uh, rocky. They got dicey. They ended up breaking up. Um, he couldn't afford the mortgage payment all by himself. They needed both of their incomes in order to do it, but unfortunately, they're not together anymore. And so the when I talked to him on the phone was right before he was about to miss his first month's mortgage payment. Um, it, or he was about to miss his mortgage payment for the first time is what I mean. Uh, he was about to miss it and he knew he was going to miss it and he knew he couldn't do anything about it. And so we get to talking and effectively I was able to buy the house subject to take over his current mortgage because there's very little equity. But think about his perspective that he was in. So he's got a house that's got zero equity in it. As you know, it costs money to, um, to sell a house. Now, again, for easy numbers, let's just say $100,000. The house is worth more than that. But just for easy math, it's $100,000. Let's just say he owes uh, $98,000 on a $100,000 loan. I'm sorry, $98,000 loan on a $100,000 house. He owes ninety eight. dollars The house is only worth $100,000. That means there's very little equity. Well, it typically costs about 10% in closing costs, 6% to the real estate agents. Uh, where I live in Pennsylvania, it's a 2% transfer tax. And then there's attorney's fees, titles fees, all these other fees, right? Every every time a house gets bought and sold, everybody's got their hand out. Everybody wants to get paid. And so it's about 10%. Good rule of thumb. So at a $100,000 house, it's going to cost you about $10,000 to sell your house. But what happens if you have no equity? Because normally that money would come out of the equity, right? If he only owed $50,000 and he sold for $100,000, he would take the first 10 would be closing costs and then that extra 40 that's left over would be profit to him. But what happens when you don't have any equity? Well, what happens is you have to pay all that money out of pocket. So let's say he sold his house at 100. There would be $10,000 worth of closing costs that he's responsible to pay basically as a seller. That's just how we do how it works, right? But he he owes 98,000. So the 100,000 comes in, pays off the $98,000 mortgage, there's $2,000 left over, but it costs him 10 to sell it, but he only got two back. So that means he's got to come out of pocket $8,000 to sell his house. In this particular real life scenario that I'm talking about, for him, it was actually $15,000. So it was going to cost him about $15,000 when it was all said and done to sell his house because it had no equity in it. Keeping in mind, a big, huge problem here is that he's about to start missing mortgage payments, which is a one-way track to foreclosure because you start start missing mortgage payments and uh, the bank is going to notice <laughs> and they're going to start the foreclosure process and take the house back. So it's kind of like a double whammy. 
He can't really sell the house because of the, there's no equity, and he didn't have $15,000 to come out of pocket. He didn't have enough money to make his mortgage payment, right? He doesn't have an extra $15,000 laying around to sell his house. And on top of that, he doesn't have time. That's number one, right? We talked about time. He doesn't have time to sell the house because he's going to start missing mortgage payments. He doesn't have three months or six months uh, to try to sell the house on market. And even if he did, by the time he finally gets there, he's going to have to pay $15,000 or more because now he's missed a bunch of mortgage payments. He's just in a dire situation. And so number three is a lot of times the reason why somebody will sell you their house at a discount is because they're going to lose it anyway, meaning the alternative is worse. I mean, I get asked this question sometimes, like, why would anybody sell their house subject to? The simple answer, there's a few reasons, but the, the overarching answer is because the alternative is worse. The alternative to selling your house subject to is actually worse. And so a lot of times the some deals that you can put together, particularly subject to deals, um, like I told you, I, I'm buying another house subject to that I just signed up a couple weeks ago. That's a different situation. But the reason why somebody in this case would sell subject to is because they're going to lose the house anyway. And they can't pay for the mortgage anyway, and their credit is about to get obliterated by a foreclosure, and they're not going to be able to borrow money again for at least probably seven years. And you stepping in, buying the house at a discount, and maybe even with creative financing like Subject 2, is actually a huge blessing to them. It like Again, same, same story. This guy has thanked me now multiple times, even wrote me a... a um, what do they call it? Like a testimonial, like a testimonial saying like, hey, this was a really great situation for me, etc. And I'm glad to have sold my house subject to. So number one is they need the money fast. They can't list on the market. Number two is they're not retail ready. Uh, the house needs a lot of work and they just can't do it or they don't have the time, etc. Number three is that they're going to lose the house anyway. And you buying their house is actually going to save the bacon and avoid a lot of bigger problems in their life than they would otherwise have if you didn't buy the house. So if this has been helpful to you, by the way, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you will, uh, join me here. But now we're getting into the, the, the one that you would not expect. This is number four. Thank you for sticking around with me this long in the video. Uh, I'm buying another house subject to, same deal, just basically $1 down. And in this case, I am walking into a bunch of equity about thirty to forty thousand dollars, and the reason why this couple is effectively leaving thirty to forty thousand dollars worth of equity on the table, uh, again, they don't know what I know in in the sense that they don't know how to clean the house out and market it and find a, a seller finance buyer and jump through all those hoops and the paperwork and all that kind of stuff, but. Because I now know that, because I've done all this, uh, we've done a few deals, and I've, I have really great mentors who hold my hand and walk me through this whole thing. Like I know immediately as soon as they're moved out and we close on the house, I can pretty easily sell this house for $30,000 more than I'm actually buying it for. And what I'm buying it for is just what's left on the mortgage, and I'm taking that over subject to. Now, why in the world would this couple do that? Why would they sell me their house subject to not take any money at closing. They're just going to hand the keys over and walk away and effectively leaving for me anyway, maybe it's not $30,000, $40,000 worth of equity for them. But for me, it's thirty dollars to $40,000 worth of equity because I know what I can do with the house. And again, I'm not talking about fixing it up and flipping it. I'm talking about just turning around and remarketing it and selling it to a, an owner finance buyer. And the reason why they're doing, they're willing to do this, I know you won't expect this, but it's the truth, is number four, they just don't want to list with an agent. They just don't want to. They just don't want to. So you're saying, Jason, why in the world would somebody sell a house to you subject to like walk away with basically nothing and leave $30,000 worth of equity on the table for you to turn around, do nothing to the house, don't rehab it, don't you know, fix anything, and don't hire real estate agents, don't, don't do any of that stuff, just turn around and... and and sell it for $30,000 more. Why would somebody do that? Why would they rather not hire a real estate agent and you know clean the place out just a little bit and put it on the market and get that $30,000 for the, themselves? In this case, the house is really not in that bad of disrepair. It may, okay, it needs maybe new, new carpet, new paint, something like that, like in order to sell in the retail market, maybe, maybe. Honestly, it might sell just like it is. Like it's really not that bad. It's, it's a 
really solid, decent house? And the answer is they just don't want to. They just don't want to. <laughs> they don't want to vet agents and hire an agent. They don't want to put their house on the market and take time to find a retail buyer. They don't want to have to do showings. They don't want to, they don't want to have to do any of that. They just don't want to mess with it. And I know that may sound crazy to you, and it certainly sounds crazy to a lot of people out there. Why would somebody leave $30,000 worth of equity on the table for you, the real estate investor, to just walk right into instead of hiring a real estate agent, going to the market and selling the house for top dollar? Why would they do something like that? The answer is they just don't want to mess with it. For some people, it is just too big a headache and literally stresses them out thinking about all the rigmarole and all the hoops they have to jump through and all the the work they have to put in and all the decisions they have to make over a long period of time to get top dollar for their house. For some people, it is just so much easier to just sell it to somebody who's just willing to take it as it is. Uh, we're paying the closing costs, which is honestly not that bad. It's a couple thousand bucks. You know, like they just basically said, okay, Jason, you just take it as it is. Like we're not fixing anything. We're not you know, cleaning anything out, like here's the keys, like we're just going to walk away, right? And the reason is because they already have their new house. So um, they they ended up in a situation where they inherited some land. They had a house that was built. They're having a house built. They're, they're literally still uh, moving out right now as I'm recording this video. We haven't closed on it yet, but there's no reason why we're not going to. Uh, they're moving out right now. They're just waiting for their appliances to come in and stuff in their new house. Psychologically, mentally, emotionally, like they're already moved into their new house. They just want to move into their new house and and move on with their life. They they want to you know get rid of this, this, some of their stuff. They want a new life. They're turning over a new leaf. It's like it's a brand new house. It's brand new appliances. Like they don't want to mess with the what they feel is like this dead weight following them around, which is the old house. Which again, between you and I, it's really not that bad a shape. Like it's a pretty decent house. I'm not going to hardly have to do anything to it because they are taking most of all their stuff with them. You know, maybe we have a few things to clean up here or there, you know, run vacuum on the carpet or whatever. Again, it's not good carpet. Again, the house needs to be painted, but I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to owner finance it to the next person who wants to do all of that for probably thirty to $40,000 more than the underlying mortgage that we're taking over subject to, just like on day one. And the reason is the couple just wants to be done. They just don't want to have to think about it. They don't want to have to go through the process. They don't want to have to make decisions. They don't want to have to put work into it. They don't want to drag it out. They don't want this lingering thing that they have to deal with while they're trying to just move into and enjoy their beautiful brand new home. They just don't want to mess with it, right? And so that's big reason number four why somebody will sell you their house at a discount and maybe even offer creative financing like subject to terms is because they just don't want to mess with it. They just don't. They're just done. I just, you know, it's a perfectly fine house. Doesn't need a lot of work. They're not pressed for time. There's no reason why they can't just like put it on the market and sell it, right? They're not, they're not pressed for time. They're not going to lose it. They're not behind on their mortgage. Like the other three reasons that we've mentioned in this video, like they don't have time. The house is not market ready uh, and uh, they're about to lose it anyway. None of those are true for them. Like they're not about to lose their house. They absolutely could hire a real estate agent and probably sell it as is. I mean, I plan to. That's that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to hire a real estate agent, but I'm just going to sell it as is, right? And uh, what was the first one? Oh, press for time. They're not pressed for time. Like they could juggle both mortgage payments if they had to, their current one and the new house that they just bought that they're moving into. They don't want to. It kind of puts them in a bind, but they could juggle it for three months, six months while their house sells on the market for top dollar. There's no other reason. It's not time. It's not disrepair. It's not behind on their mortgage like they're about to lose the house. None of those reasons are true. It's just simply number four. They just don't want to mess with it. Like, And that's how we are, right, as people sometimes. Like, I just, I'm willing to let you step into some equity. I'm willing to, to sell my house at a discount. If you, Jason, will exchange for me the peace of mind and convenience of being able just to move on with my life and you figure it out. Like, you figure out what all needs to be fixed and flipped and repaired on this thing. You figure out what real estate agent to hire. You figure out what to do that with the house. You take over the mortgage. You start paying those bills. Like, you just figure it all out. I'm just going to hand you the keys and walk away. And uh, let me know when 
you know, let me know if you need me. But otherwise, they're done. Like, they're they're going to move on. We're going to close on the house. We're going to take it over subject two. But in their mind, it's a huge benefit. Even the subject two is a big benefit because we're taking over the mortgage payments for them. It's going to stay in their name, and the deed is going to transfer to us. We become the new owners, but we're going to be making payments on their behalf on the mortgage, which to them is like a huge burden off. Like, I don't have to fix anything. I don't have to flip anything. I don't have to find any agents. I don't have to wait three to six months and do a bunch of work and phone calls and back and forths and negotiations. I don't have to keep paying this mortgage payment for three to six months while it sits on the morg- the, the market. Like I'm just done. Jason's going to step in. He's going to buy the house and we're going to walk away and just be done. And they can you know, go frolicking into the fields and enjoying their new life and their beautiful new home. That's all they want. Number four is you're going to talk to people, especially if you download the guide and get going and get your phone blowing up, who will absolutely sell you their house and maybe even offer creative financing like subject to terms for the simple reason that they just don't want to mess with the whole on market thing. It's not that they, in this case, can't go on market. They absolutely could. They just don't want to. They just don't want to. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you want to know how I keep buying all these houses without any of my own money, click or tap this video here. And if you want to know the difference between subject to and seller financing and how to buy houses that way, click or tap this video here. My name is Jason Baca. I will see you in the next video. Peace.